Hello everyone and welcome to RBCM at Home. My name is Kim Goff and I'm a learning program developer at the Royal BC Museum. I hope you're all doing well and finding ways to take care of yourselves however you need to. I'm coming to you from my home on the territories of the Lekwungen speaking people here in Esquimalt. In this series, we are talking with staff of the museum and in the case of today, their guests as well. Today, we have the Royal BC Museum's Curator of History, Dr. Tsui Chung, and her guests, Ms. Joanne Ma and Mr. Brian Louie. Tsui is one of two curators of history at the museum, and she is a cultural and social historian who's broadly interested in transnational migration. Tsui, before I ask you to introduce our guests maybe more formally, why are family histories important to research? Um... You just want me like to give a quick answer? Um, you do what you do best, Sui. Um, so it is of great significance to us that we work on family history, such as the one we are talking about today, because it connects us to certain important past and current experiences. And uh, I really have a lot to say about why and how important it is to talk about these type of history, considering the certain uh, certain events that are unfolding in terms of the discrimination and other acts that in the time of a pandemic. I think it's particularly important to remember that a lot of these mechanisms and experiences are not new. They have been there for a long time and we really need to learn from what we know of those histories. Terrific. And May is Asian Heritage Month. So what does Asian Heritage Month? Why is this an important time to be talking about this? Um, I can address that when I get into um, part of what I am going to talk to today really briefly. Excellent. Um, yeah, so I have a short PowerPoint. Can I just share it? Yes, please. Um, so how do I do that? Just a sec. Okay. I'm sorry, I don't, oh yeah. While Si is pulling that up, Joanne, can I get you to maybe introduce yourself a little bit and tell folks where you're um, joining us from? Yes, um, I'm joining you from Vancouver, beautiful sunny Vancouver today. Uh, I am, uh, I guess, the oldest granddaughter, the oldest grandchild of our current cousins. Uh, my father, Tim Louie, is Tim Louie, and uh, uh, he is one of 11 siblings of uh, H.Y. Louie and Shang Yi Louie, and uh, I had the pleasure of knowing quite a bit about uh, the family growing up and also the grandmother. Thank you. And Brian? Yes, um, I'm um, calling uh, in from my office in Vancouver and um, yeah, I'm glad to be here today. And uh, my father um, was Willis Louie uh, and he uh, was number 10 out of 11 in the family of that generation. And um, yeah, I gained a, a really uh, wonderful experience uh, uh, about the family through his eyes um, uh, growing up. So I'm glad to be here to be able to share a bit today. Thank you so much. So Sui, back to you and your um, presentation you have ready here for us. We're seeing your screen, so you're good um, to go. Yeah, I just wanna continue what, um, was what Kim was asking. The reason we really do our work is to cultivate an understanding of what British Columbians went through to get to where we are today and what knowledge we wish the future generations to keep and share. And based on that knowledge, what present and future we wish, um, what type of um, present and future we wish to create together as a collect, collect group collective group. And in this process, it's important to turn our attention to previously underrepresented groups and stories. So if you didn't tune in to our last session on the Fran Francophone Gishan family history, I will briefly cover the origin of this work. When we worked on the BC Gold Rush history for a 2015 exhibition, it became apparent to me that the 1858 gold rush, which was the first major spur of immigration that later shaped uh, our province and nation today, 
left very few marginalized families that we can trace direct lineage through generations with clear memories. So I eventually located the oral history of the Seto Luyi family that went back to 1865, which is very rare uh, with record. And we work with a family on our Canada 150 exhibit um, for 2017. So the extended family today is really quite large. I have a lot of research materials for the extended family, but um, we're focusing on the Louis side of the family that continues um, today. Um, they run the family business of the HY Louis family company that includes the IGA and London Drugs. Um, this is the family's first and second generation. And I work with three members of the family from the third generation. And we are very glad to be joined by two of them, Joanne and Brian. So Tim Louis in the back row is the oldest of the second generation and Joanne is his oldest. Um, Willis Louis in the front row, second youngest of that generation. Um, his son Brian is here with us and the, Brian is also one of the youngest in the third generation. So H.Y. Louis uh, during his time worked through a lot of opportunities, but also a lot of difficulties to build his business. And uh, one of the things I looked for in family history was what connects a family together and what keeps a family going through generations. So H.Y. Lui placed a lot of importance in family education for his children. When he traveled to Hong Kong in 1934, he wrote letters to his third son, Bill. And the three letters that survive would continue to guide the family business. They are hung in the headquarter. And I think the only time they left the building was when it was on loan to our family's exhibit at our museum during um, 2017. So from this letter, one quote is, quote, young people should always be earnest in your work. Treat your customers with trust and loyalty. When pursuing prosperity, you must follow the laws of heaven. Don't be afraid to be kind and charitable. So this is from March 30th, 1934. And another quote from the second letter, um, quote, be earnest, fair, and loyal in your dealings with customers. Discuss things with your fellow workers. Be amiable to them. Show respect to your mother." End quote. So according to the family members and the staff members that I spoke to, the business today continues to be guided by the same values. Mr. Brent Louis, who couldn't join us today, shared that for the family business today, quote, Longevity and success are the results of good planning and execution and taking care of all the stakeholders in the game, end quote. So the history of the family business speaks to Chinese Canadians' important contribution to the agricultural service and other sectors in BC history. But today, of course, it's not only Chinese Canadian. There are so many different intercultural workforce that joined in sharing and con continuing this family value. So Asian Heritage Month in Canada is really the, all, the intercultural experience and reality in BC and Canada. And a lot of these things have to be considered together. So Asian Heritage is not just for Asians or Asian Canadians, it's for every single person in this country. So that answers um, Kim's question at the beginning. Um, that's what Asian Heritage Month means to us. There are so many different diverse values and um, ethics that continue to bind us together. So another key historical connection of the family is the turning point in Chinese Canadian history, the Second World War. The family members, um, several of them, were among the Chinese Canadians who volunteered to not only serve their adopted country, but also to fight for justice and franchise for Chinese Canadians. So Wang Feng Guan Lu Yi, this one here. Um, where is my arrow? Okay. He was serving in the Royal Canadian Air Force 
first as ground service crew and through persistence, um, later as a flying officer in the Snowy Owl Squadron. Unfortunately, he died in the final mission in January 1945. So Brian's father, Willis, was very close to Guan Lu. He's here. So this is a letter from Guan to Willis, and Brian will speak to this memory. Last year, the family's exhibit traveled to the Canadian Museum of Immigration at Pier 21. And Guan's story was featured as a Remembrance Day special after the family's exhibits run. So now um, Joanne will speak to what family history means to her, and then Brian will follow. So Joanne, would you like to start? Yes, thank you for the opportunity today. Um, it's been uh, a wonderful experience to be part of this family. The history, what it means to me is that uh, it informs me of who I am. And as you say, it really connects me as a bridge to uh, my identity, my culture. And uh, I think the other thing is that by knowing my roots, uh, I've been able to you know, move, move forward and actualize a lot of my, uh, uh, my dreams. And also it gives me a sense of direction. And I think that the history uh, has been shaped by growing up with all the Louis when they were all together at home. I, I didn't know my Uncle Quan. He left uh, uh, to serve and apparently my, my mother brought me down to say goodbye to him and he gave me a little pinch on the cheek to say that, uh, be a good girl when you grow up. So, but the rest of the family, I got to know very well. Um, my father gave me the opportunity uh, to go down there and connect with the family uh, at 254 East Georgia and Eight Toy Louis, uh, where my dad was, it was across the street. So uh, I think we, even though we lived in the West Side, the ability to go down and see everybody on a daily basis. I got to know my grandmother quite well. Uh, every day after kindergarten, I would go and see her. Um, I think what uh, a lot of people have told me in the family was that, you know, to be a mother of 11 was not easy, but apparently she could every night gather them all together after dinner and talk to them about family values uh, since, uh, her husband had passed away in 1935. So I, I get a sense of, you know, through the stories that I've heard and also just by interacting with my uncles, I, I really got a sense of direction in terms of uh, guidance and role model that they were to me. So I think the uh, legacy I think today is that uh, family is the most important asset that we have. And um, I think we, stick together uh, then and we still do today and uh, you know in times of adversity we close rank and it's wonderful to have this kind of security when you know you know your family is all around you. It's been very lucky that uh, I have an aunt who turns 95 next week and she's the last member of the uh, 11 siblings and we are all going to hopefully get together and wish her a Zoom birthday you know so the connections all are very much alive and they carry on on a, on a uh, daily basis. We talk to one another. Joanne, before we go to Brian, I'm, I'm curious about your role as, a, as, a, as the family historian. Is this something that you naturally gravitated towards or was this something you were encouraged to do? You know, I think when you grow up with it, I think I, when I first was introduced to uh, all, all the whole family, you know, I was uh, kindergarten age. But to grow up with them and my eyes wide open, uh, they were always interacting with me. So I had a natural affinity to be very curious and also remember. I think uh, my gratitude, you know, really comes from the memories that I have of being able to have all this uh, available to me. So I think that it's a natural gravitation that I have of the family. What sort of tools do you use to help you remember? Are you, do you keep tools, photographs? Well, the, the tools I have is uh, everything that uh, uh, my father left me. He was uh, quite a good collector of, of uh, many things, you know, that uh, he was passed on to him from his father. And also the other tools are that uh, 
I, I talk with my other cousins all the time. And when there were more uncles around, talk with them too about the past. And, and you know, it's, it's the synergy of the group dynamics uh, that I think. So I think the tools are, you know, memory, uh, it's verbal. And uh, I plan to write a memoir of my own, just seeing through the eyes of a young child. That's how I'm going to do it. Oh, good. I hope so. That, that would be fantastic. I really enjoyed memoirs as a, as a genre. I think they're wonderful. Brian, uh, Sue E referenced that you had a special relationship um, in learning some of those family histories. Do you want to tell us a little bit more about that? Sure. Um, yeah, thank you again for the opportunity to share today on um, my thoughts. And uh, I want to say that uh, family history is, is very important to me, and I'm incredibly proud to be a member of the Louis family, not just because of its many accomplishments, but because of the, um, the life-giving relationships that have been forged through the years amongst family members. Um, I'm hopeful that the importance of these relationships will be um, passed on as a value for the next generation. Um, one of the things that we've done as a family for as long as I've been alive, which has been quite a long time, is, in, is we, we've gotten together for dinner at least once a year. We have a large family, but we, and we interact individually, but we do get together and it's, it's an important event that we, uh, that we, um, are, 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 we attend to on January 1st. We meet for a, a meal at a Chinese restaurant and there's lots of camaraderie and, um, and, uh, and good food, and it's just a way that we can um, renew our family bonds together and start the new year off right, uh, knowing what our priorities are. Um, I wanted to share a little bit about my father. Um, my relationship with him um, has much to do with who I am today. <coughs> Unfortunately, he passed away uh, in 2012, but it, it was a very special relationship that was based on um, uh, on mutual respect and trust and love. And um, I think um, the values that my father um, passed on to me, many of them he learned uh, with in his, um, his family um, growing up with all his siblings. And, and, and for, for, for him, um, the important things uh, were that he, he believed uh, that it was important to have a faith and a trust in God he uh, wanted us to live a life of integrity. And he always said to me, you've got to give 100% to whatever you do in life. And, um, you know, it's been eight years since he's passed, but I, I can hear him speaking in my head right now. <laughs> so um, he was, as I said earlier, um, number 10 out of 11 in his family. And I think um, as a family growing up in in uh, Vancouver's Chinatown on East Georgia Street, um, the family during those days had to work hard to earn their place in society. And the, and the values they learned um, uh, that they all shared were to be trustworthy, to be dependable, and to be generous. And I remember my dad <coughs> saying to me, which I think he learned from his family, is that you know, if you're going to do something, and if you say you're going, to, if you're going to make a commitment to do something, you better do it. Otherwise, your um, your credibility won't be there. Um, and so, it's important to um, to uh, walk the talk, I guess, if you if you if I can say that. And also, there was a spirit of generosity within him that I think he gleaned from the rest of the family as well. And um, he just loved to um, to give. And I think. Um, I think um, his, what he understood was that, you know, we don't always, we shouldn't always be focusing on ourselves and our own needs. Um, I'll share another story uh, before I um, talk a little bit about his brother Quan, but, um, you know, um, the family growing up, as Joanne said, on 254 East Georgia, um, they were a very close-knit group, but they had a lot, they, all of them, they, they truthfully had very strong personalities as well. And so that, that uh, sometimes involves some spirited um, interaction, but you know, they were all very fiercely loyal and protective of one another. And, and uh, 
little brief story <laughs> that I wanted to tell was uh, my aunt, um, one of the aunts, Aunt B, told me about the time when my dad was in elementary school. He was getting picked on by this older kid, um, bigger kid, and my aunt, who um, was just a couple of years older than him, um, said she put on a brave face and went up and stood up against this this young kid and put him in a headlock and wrestled him to the ground. Now, maybe she was embellishing a little bit, but that's what she said she did. And she said, I wasn't going to let anyone uh, pick on my kid brother. So I had to take care of business. So <laughs> that was uh, that was my aunt and um, just an example of her, her protectiveness and her, her, um, her love for her brother. Um, now, um, another um, characteristic um, that the family had, and I've noticed through the years, is that they're very, very loyal to one another. And one of the things my dad um, wanted to do um, it, when he was alive was to remember uh, Quan and what he did in his sacrifice um, for uh, for for Canada and 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 in 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 the Second World War, he um, went um, and volunteered and jo joined the RCAF. Um, there were two other brothers that were serving as well, Ernie, uh, and also for the for uh, the the Army, and also um, Ed, who was in the U.S. Army. So um, the three of them volunteered, but Quan. Um, he paid the ultimate sacrifice when he gave his life. Uh, he was killed in action uh, as he was a, a bomb aimer with, a, with, a, with the RCAF on a Halifax bomber in January of 1945. And my dad wanted to learn more about this. So he um, embarked on a little mission to try to find out more. And one of the, the, a few of the things he did to, to learn about what his brother did is he, he went to Berlin to visit uh, the cemetery where he was, where he's buried today. Um, he's in a Canadian uh, British military cemetery. Uh, he also traveled to England, <coughs> to Tolthorpe, and um, he um, visited the air base w uh, where um, his brother Quan flew out of. And it's, it's a small little air base. I've been there myself near York, England. And um, it was there that he uh, flew his 29 missions from and so um, I think um, uh, the, that, and then the last thing uh, that I'll share was that he went, uh, he also invited, he searched out and invited um, the remaining surviving crew members of his, um, his squadron, the, the Snowy Owl 420 squadron. He sought them out and found them in Ontario in the 80s. And he um, invited and flew them out to Vancouver. And um, he invited the whole family to get together so that they could meet the family and share their stories about Quan and what Quan, um, who Quan was, what Quan was like uh, during those, those days. So that was a very special event. So, uh, you know, I think um, <coughs> these um, experiences of protection from an older sister against a schoolyard bully to um, to to um, seeking out um, uh, the, the 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 story of his brother um, meant a lot to my father, and I think what he wanted to do was to um, do this so that the family could gain, and what he learned was he gained a deep appreciation for the values that I uh, that I shared about today, as well as. Um, what um, what family what is important for family and, and he would have been hopeful that these values would resonate with the next generation and that they would carry on this this uh, the importance of, of, of family history into the next generations and I think lastly one of the things I've learned is that um, is that what we do as a family uh, today can have significant influence and impact on future generations long after we're gone. So we're talking about Quan Louie and he's been gone, uh, you know, he's been gone 75 years or so. <coughs> so that's uh, what I wanted to share. And thank you for giving me that, that opportunity. 
Well, thank you, Brian, for articulating that so well and sharing the story of your your father and your uncle. And uh, it's very touching to hear about the lengths he went to to find out more about his experience and bringing those members over to meet the family because in some way they beca they became like an extended family. And um, I think you the family values that you articulated of being trustworthy, dependable, and generous, and loyal to family are, are beautiful values. And uh, I think you're, you're so lucky your family has, articulates those so well and, um, and shows them in your actions and, and by what you do. Joanne, um, Brian said that he hopes the future generations um, remember the importance of family. Would you add anything else to that? What you hope future generations remember about the Louis family or, or pass on? I, I would hope that the next generation will live out some of those values and uh, incorporate them into their own lives and uh, also remember with a great deal of gratitude that has been passed on and over uh, several generations. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So e, there's a, you've uh, demonstrated such good practice today by bringing in two members of the family to share and talk about the story. Uh, one of our, our participants watching said um, it's a really important reminder for her that um, when we're thinking about histories, that remembering that each relationship is different and, and our memories are different as well. When you were doing the, the research e, for the, the family's exhibit, did you have some sort of best practice about how many members of a family you, you talk to or need to talk to in order to get a, a full picture? So um, each, it's like working with communities. Um, when you start talking to one person, then they would refer to some other people that you need to speak to and um, documents and places that you need to check out. So. Um, each community and families have different numbers of people and things that I have to check out. And there's always endless stuff to really figure out. So I would never say that I get a full picture of anything. And that's why it's really valuable to have Joanne and Brian here with us to speak in their own voices about their own perspectives. And Joanne, you've been talking about that um, memoir for a long time. I just I, I'm I, gonna tell it. See it. I think it's a good time now. <laughs> okay, we have you on a recording now, so. <laughs> yeah, you are on I'm, on, I'm on record now. You're on record. Oh, and speaking of records, yeah, I wanted to ask those great images you shared at the beginning and the documents, are those all from BC Archives or were those from the family members themselves? Okay, so um, there are two sources of the archival documents here. And then with extended family, our BC archives have some codings, but um, the first part of the archival images were all in the HY Louis family company's archive. And the second part um, is all in the personal private family collection of Brian's. Mm. Yeah, Excellent. so I, I credited both of those sources. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks to the family for sharing those records. And I, I feel very, um, I guess, jealous <laughs> of you having that deep connection to your family through such a long period of time in, in such a beautiful way. Those, um, those values that were written out by your ancestor, I think, are, are very precious. And um, um, thank can I you. Add mm -hmm. one thing, though. Course, um, yeah. I felt like um, when when I was studying the family history, it's connected to a lot of other Chinese Canadian and Chinese American families. Um, mm -hmm. uh, in fact, and I think one of the reason is um, there were so um, that there was a very largely bachelor society among the Chinese Canadian communities for a long, long time, even after the Second World War. So those who actually manage to establish families, they really had to bond together and just be there for each other. And I think that was one of the, the legacy of that discriminate, discriminatory past. And of course, the families themselves were strong, but also there was a need from the external so social pressure that really get families together. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. With Asian Heritage Month being this month, there's a lot of great resources out there. If you're interested in learning more uh, about that, please do some good searching online. You can always start with the Royal BC Museum. We have our learning portal and some terrific pathways on there about Asian Canadian histories and experiences. But again, finding out in your community uh, and seeing what's happening in your area 
just check out uh, Asian Heritage Month Canada and you'll see a great list of things that are taking place all around. Uh, thank you though for making today part of one of those things that you did. Uh, RBCM at Home takes place every Tuesday and Thursday at noon. You can join us on Tuesday when I'll talk with the curator of art and images, Dr. India Young, about some of the women artists in the collection of the Royal BC Museum and the BC Archives. If you have young people in your homes, let them know about RBCM at Home Kids on Wednesdays at 11. These sessions feature a museum educator and staff members sharing activities you can do at home. And also on Wednesdays, we have RBCM outside at 2 p.m. You can find links for all of these programs posted on the Royal BC Museum's website. While we wait for better days, I'm so happy to have uh, this way to stay connected. It was such a pleasure to meet you, Joanne, and to meet you, Brian. And thank you, Sui, for bringing us all together today. And happy Asian Heritage Month, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.